Hi guys, this is QA Shahin and in this video we are going to look at some of the most common automation questions that you may be asked in an interview. So we're going to go through some questions that I think you will most likely be asked in an interview. Why do I think these are common? Well, I've actually done a number of interviews myself during the early stage of my career in the field of testing i was on the end of the stick where i was interviewing and in recent times i've been on the other end of the stick i'm the interviewer so i've been on both sides i've hired a number of dev qas that i work with even today and i've also been part of the process from a very early point in my career and what that basically means for me is that I have a lot of knowledge around the types of questions that I usually ask and I have a number of assumptions on the sort of answers that I may get back. So we will look at some of the most common questions that I think are asked in and around the concept of automation in testing. As always, you can go and check out my blog instead. There should be a link in the description below. The beauty of the blog is that over time, if I decide to add in more common questions, like then I can just update my blog entry. Sadly, you can't really do the same with the video. So let's look at the first question, which is good automation features for an automation framework. Now I've listed five features here, which I think are potentially the most important. There are some other features, but I think these make up a strong makeup of an automation framework. Now, these aren't in any order of importance. They all carry the same weight, but this is just a personal preference. Let's go through them. Speed. So why is speed important for a framework? Well, you would want your test to run as quickly as possible. Sometimes it doesn't really matter how many tests you have. You might have one test, you might have 10 tests, you might have 100 tests. But if it takes hours to run your code or to run your test, regardless of how much value you get from those tests, let's just assume they pass every single time. It doesn't matter. No one will be willing to wait a long amount of time. Speed in this sense is more about how quickly you get your result. So for instance, if you were to run a hundred tests in a matter of seconds, then that's a great thing. Naturally, when we talk about automation UI test, that's just not going to happen. You won't be able to run 100 tests in a matter of seconds, simply because more often than not, it takes a couple of seconds just to boot up a browser and run your test in that. Some solutions to help speed up a test would include parallelization, or you could also consider running tests in multiple different browsers. Maintenance. Why is maintenance important? It's important that you're able to maintain your code. Why? Because if you can't maintain your code, there's a good understanding that you probably won't understand how the code actually works. Being able to maintain your code could mean the difference between extending the framework or removing it altogether. Modular. So what do I mean by modular? Think of modular as a Lego wall. You're able to put on new pieces and you're able to take things out without having to do too much fuss. Modular is a concept where you're able to plug in new technologies and remove existing technologies. Why is that concept even important? Well, let's assume you're using a test framework. Doesn't matter what it is. Let's just assume you're using a test framework and you write your test in such a way that you're able to pull out a test framework and plug a new one in. Why would you want to do that? Perhaps you gain benefits. Perhaps there's a better version of a different test framework that you would benefit from. There usually are a number of reasons associated with such technologies. But the idea is that you don't strongly couple technologies to your framework because then you sort of end up with effectively a dead framework. What that means is your framework cannot change. It is tied to that technology. If that technology goes out of date, if it introduces security flaws, there's just no way around it. 
worst case, you may end up having to write every single test again. So it is in your interest to make your framework as modular as possible because this makes it more extendable for the future. Debug and error. So why is debug and error even important? Debug and error is probably one of the most important features of a good framework. Many would argue that. Why? Because when a test fails, if you have no idea what the failure is, then that test has given you effectively zero value. Again, someone may argue that, no, it hasn't. It's run a scenario and it's told it's passed. Well, that's great. But we don't care when it passes. We care when it fails. Why? Because if it passes, we know that the requirement has passed. We may not need to know what the requirement is because when we wrote our test, we were capturing requirements. The problem becomes when a requirement fails, i.e. when a test fails, if it fails and it isn't able to tell you what the failure is, and the first thing you have to do is debug the code, then that's not much value. So a test should be able to tell you what the error is. On the reverse side, debug, it is important that you're able to debug the code. It is important that when you're looking through your test, that you understand exactly what is happening. You shouldn't have to go into a method to find out that it still doesn't make sense. You shouldn't have to traverse method after method to try and figure out what is happening. That's why debug is important and configurable. It's important that you can configure your test. It's important that you're able to run your test against at different environments, inject different variables without actually having to touch the test itself. One way to do that would be to maintain configuration files. You might be asked what are the disadvantages of an end-to-end -end automation? Well, if you write an end-to-end -end automation test, one thing that you shouldn't really try to test are user interfaces. Why? Because they may change. Something that an end-to-end -end automation test doesn't do is it doesn't help you explore scenarios. What that means is the test that you write is the exact same test that the scenario or the automated test will try to check for. It is impossible for an automated test to randomly go and select buttons and run scenarios. So those are potentially the two biggest disadvantages you have for an automated test. When to automate a manual test? So in what instance should you actually try to automate a manual test? Let's just assume you've been running a manual test for some amount of time and you now would like to convert that to an automated test. In what instance should you try to convert a manual test into an automated test? Well, you may want to consider does this test actually have any external dependencies? In other words, is this test fully self-sufficient? Is it fully self-isolated? If the answer is yes, then that would make it a good candidate to convert into an automated test. How about the schedule of the test? How often does the test need to run? If the test, say, only needs to run maybe once a day, maybe once a month, then is there much value in automating that? Let's just say you have a number of tests which need to run every hour every two hours. A test that needs to run often should be considered for automation. The idea of automation is to free up the person who does manual testing so that they can actually spend their time exploring the application. In other words, tests that run very often should be automated. Is automation a replacement for manual testing? So we just touched on that. Short answer is no, absolutely not. Automation does not replace manual testing. I personally think that manual testing is far more important than automation testing. Automation testing gives you something. It gives you the ability to free up yourself. It gives you the ability to not be too stressed about the requirements. Are they still captured? Are they still satisfied? Automation test allows you to run a number of scenarios across a number of browsers and check for functionality. But what an automation test cannot do is tell you if your application looks the way it should, if it behaves in a decorative pattern, does it, are the buttons in the right places, is, is the coloring right, does it feel correct, is the user experience 
amazing and fascinating. These soft things, although they may not mean like a lot, for things like web application, these soft subjects of touch and feel becomes very important. And this is something that an automation test just cannot pick up, not today anyway. But what an automated test can do is that it can give you the ability to spend more time exploring your application. Now, this is a very interesting question. What test do you not automate? In what instance should you not automate a test? A test that runs very, very less frequently should not be automated because you don't really get a lot of value out of it versus say a test that runs a lot. So let's think of an example of a test that doesn't run very often. Let's assume that for your test, you have to spin out a new environment and you have to create a new database and then you have to populate that database. You could write a test for that database just to check that the data in the database has been populated correctly. But what's the point? Because once that database is populated correctly, the data in that database might be consumed by other tests. So do you really need to write a test for that? Putting that to one side, once the database is populated, you won't need to run that test again because it's done. So tests that run very, very less frequently shouldn't really be automated. How about trying to automate interfaces that keep on changing? If you have an application say that isn't very mature yet it is in the early stages it might be in an alpha version or a beta version but there is a lot of ui that constantly changes that's a candidate for you to not automate why because your tests will keep on failing your tests will continue to be very unstable and sadly it is not the fault of your test it is the behavior of the application itself it's not about blaming it's not about finger pointing, it's more about being pragmatic. You should write a test for a functionality that you don't expect to change, but you shouldn't write tests for functionality that you expect to change because of the maturity of an application. How do you measure the success of an automated test? Right, so let's just say we've automated a test a week ago. And every time that test has run for the whole week, it has always passed. That is one way of saying that the test that you wrote is a successful test. It is giving you value. If a test fails, and upon looking at that failure, it is evident that the failure is actually capturing a valid bug. We have broken something. Then that is also the success of a test. When a test runs over time, it's not about it's just checking something is working. It's also about exposing bugs that might have been missed in the regression phase of that code. At some point, the assumption is that it was pushed to some release branch where maybe some tests were running. Again, I would only assume that someone did some manual testing just to make sure that nothing was introduced. Automated tests are there to help pick up any regression issues. If you're not familiar with what that means, is simply to check that we haven't introduced some new bug for existing functionality. So an additional way to measure the success of a test other than the pass rate is to see if the failure rates have actually resulted in actual bugs. And that's it for this video. So in this video, we actually looked at a number of automated related questions that you may be asked in an interview. These are all very important questions to keep in mind and these are important questions to think about. The answers I've given aren't actually solid answers. They are more as a guide to help you think about the purpose of automation. It's more about to get you thinking about the principal domain of automation. I've talked about questions on a somewhat soft technical level. For instance, features that you would want in framework, is automation replacement for manual testing. This might be somewhat philosophical, but the idea is that these questions and the answers in these videos are supposed to be there as a guide to help you think about the answers that you would give. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next one.